I'm breathing a lot of rain and the bitter cold, all inside a lab, where one scientist is doing something for the first time in the world. We're about to find out what at ACE, a giant research facility at Ontario Tech University. This is where I'm about to go off limits. Mika Nonoyama is a registered respiratory therapist. She's trying to solve a puzzle. We feel that people with chronic lung disease, when it comes to extreme weather conditions, that they're not able to be active, they get more short of breath. So we want to see, does this actually happen? Some chronic respiratory diseases cause obstructions to the airway tubes, and other diseases scar the lungs. These make it harder to breathe, even for everyday tasks. To test lungs in different weather, Mika uses this lab, where she can drop the temperature to minus 15 degrees Celsius and crank it to over 35 degrees. She can make it super dry or very humid. So I've been working with the chronic lung disease population for a while, and every time there's a weather alert, or whether it be cold or hot, they're always told to stay indoors, don't go outside. And I thought, does this actually make a difference? ACE is a massive multi-chamber research facility at Ontario Tech University. There is an aerodynamic wind tunnel and climate chambers that can spin up any weather. They're used for testing cars, performance athletes, and for the aerospace industry. Mika is using a climate chamber for an entirely different purpose today. So this is our testing space. So here is where we measure the vital signs. And over here in the chamber, this is where we actually change the weather. And today you're gonna to be our study participant. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. We need a baseline, so Mika measures my heart rate and oxygen level in my blood. My oxygen is 99%, right within the sweet spot between 95 and 100. And my heart rate is 83. Okay, Larissa, so this is where we're gonna do our uh, testing. Are you ready to go? Let's do this. Test one. I walked in the cold, wet conditions for a few minutes. So how did that feel, Larissa? It was good, it was fun. Mika uses a spirometer to measure how much air I'm taking in and breathing out. And then you can take this big breath, fill up to the top, and then blow hard. Blow, 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 and then... Good. Results are in. My lungs did great in the first test, but now I need to mimic chronic lung disease by breathing through a straw. That's hard. There's so little that comes through this. It's almost an obstruction in a way, or a narrowing, and that's exactly what it is. So one more walk test, this time with far less air. That was so hard. I couldn't breathe. I felt like I was underwater. So now you're getting a glimpse as to what it's like to live with chronic lung disease. What we hope to do is once we figure out what the problematic conditions are, is how can we actually develop ways to help these people in these conditions? Should we do a breathing technique? Should we do an exercise technique? So eventually they're able to cope and go outside instead of be, you know, inside according to the weather alerts. Do you have any words of advice for young people who might want to follow in your path? My advice is that you find something that really interests you, that you have a vision towards that. Because if you have a real interest and motivation, you actually make the steps to get there.